Okay. Okay, so hello, I'm Doralyn Rossman. I am head of digital library initiatives and professor at Montana State University in lovely Bozeman, Montana. Um, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the virtual library, making interactive online tours with 360 degree images, augmented reality, and virtual reality technologies. And so this is going to be a pretty hands on how to, but also um, with some broader concepts of how we might apply these technologies. All right, I started the recording, that slide is done. And this um, session is being sponsored by the San Jose State University School of Information. So thank you, SJSU folks for doing this. This is great. I'm really excited to see how the other sessions go today. And just from some logistics, um, you'll probably notice that all of you have been muted automatically and you cannot unmute. So if you have any logistical issues with audio, video, um, please put those in the chat and Ashley Melvin will be here to help you with any questions there. Um, also, if you have any questions or comments, please put those in the chat and Ashley's going to read those to me at the end of the session. And then um, I will be leaving about five minutes at the end of the session to field and comment. Boy, my microphone is muting myself for me. Isn't that fun? Um, okay, I've turned on live transcription. Thank you for the person who just asked for that. Oh, yeah. Live transcription, all right. So the technologies that I'm gonna show you today involve using Google Street View, a cell phone with Street View installed on it and a camera on your phone. Um, any generic photo editor that comes with your computer can used, be used to uh, resize images, which you'll need to do. And then ThingLink software. Um, and I'm gonna mention here, I am not a sales representative for ThingLink, but when I came across ThingLink in a class that I took, um, the subscription that I wanted that would allow me to post 360 images was $1,500 a year. And that was more than I wanted to spend. Um, that was going to be for three seats. So I contacted Andrew at ThingLink and said, could I just have this for $500 for one seat? I'm a library, I don't need three seats. Um, and he said, yes. And so um, I got special pricing that's not on their website. And I emailed Andrew before the session and said, I'm gonna be talking to other libraries. Would you be willing to extend this to them? And he said, sure. He said, I'm not gonna put that on our website, but if you give them my email address and reference me, Dorlin, in this session, then he will work with you if that's what is best for your budget. The noun project is the last piece of this, um, which is um, where I get some of my icons. So I'm gonna to switch to my web browser for a minute so you can just see the general tour that I have and then I'll walk through some of my other slides. So I'm currently logged into my ThingLink account and these are the various 360 images I've made and I've connected these images into a tour. So if we go here, this is the tour. And you'll notice right away that the front of the library looks a little funny. So 360 image technologies are way advanced from what they used to be, but they're not perfect. And that's okay. Um, for what I'm doing, I don't expect perfection. I expect good enough. And to me, uh, this is good enough. Where the 360 image stitching has challenges tends to be around lines. So you can see the front of our library has lines in the windows. And so it's not perfect there. Um, and the other thing that I found is the farther away you stand from things, the more likely it is that they will stitch together properly. So you want to give yourself, um, kind of get yourself in the middle of a room if you're doing a tour. So what I did is I used Google, Google Street View to take some 360 images. Um, I then resized them so they work in ThingLink, uploaded them there, and then ahead of time, I decided what I wanted to identify in these images went to the noun project to download these little icons that are glowing. 
and then I made them do stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to be walking through that today. You can, one thing you can do in ThingLink is set where you start in this picture. So, you know, I could start facing this direction. I could look at the ground. I could look facing up. I thought it would be best to start with the library. So that's what I've done here is start with the library in front center. And you'll notice that there are several different kinds of icons here. Um, this is one that I've added an image. I added some text and a link to a website. So if I click on this, uh, visit our website, it opens a new browser window, which will take you to the library's website. I also added information about neighboring buildings. Here I've added a link to some artwork. I rotate around. You can also add things like a close up of this particular uh, plaque where I took a photo. I cleared off the snow actually and then took a photo. Um, and then I allow you to zoom in to the point where you can read what's on the plaque. And then you can click the back button. And you'll notice it goes back to the initial orientation. It also spins. Um, so if you just grab it with your mouse, it stops spinning. Um, so those are some of the things I added right there. And you'll also notice in the bottom right hand corner of this page, there are several links. Um, this one right here um, on the left is to related 360 images. The next one is a VR link. So if you click on the VR link, that will actually open this up for a VR headset. So for my VR headset, I've got an Oculus Quest. And um, for that, I click on my little VR link and it goes into the full immersion where you feel like you're just standing there right on the sidewalk. And then these little icons turn into cubes that you can interact with with your handsets like you would expect. So this is a great way to use augmented, excuse me, and virtual realities, but you don't have to have the virtual reality. As you can see, it works just fine in a browser. Um, the next link over is to make it full screen. And then there's a thing link link if you want people to get back to the main thing link page. You can modify this so some or all of these show up or none of them if you want to as well. And when you make a tour, you can add an option, there's an option that says make a tour. You take multiple 360 images, and then when you say make a tour, um, you can add a link and it will take you to the next stop in the tour. And so now I'm going in the library building. And you'll notice that the icons that you've added have this sort of glowing effect. Um, so that's really handy. Um, so I'm gonna switch back to my slides now and tell you more about the logistics. Okay. so. First consideration is what are you actually trying to accomplish with using ThinkLink? So in my case, I wanted to highlight the services, spaces, and resources used by the library. So as we know, people come in the library, they study, they use the library in the same way probably most of the time, and they probably don't pay attention to the world around them very much uh, because they're there to do the thing that they came to do. Um, so um, one of the things, that you probably wanna consider is why are you doing this in the first place? Um, I also wanted to give some history of the institution and I'm gonna actually show you about adding an image that adds some history there. And then I also wanted to provide some interactive elements. So it's not just a tour like you might go on normally in person um, where you're just standing there and listen to somebody talk. In this way, you can actually have people interact with the content there. So um, I would encourage you, if you're doing a 360 tour, to write a script ahead of time, figure out where you want to actually have um, your images taken, and then figure out what icons you might need to have, what text you might want to put in place. If you want to take photos like you did of the plaque that I showed you earlier, um, any links you might want to add. You also have the potential to add audio and video to your tours. I will actually go back outside the library and show you that. So just like any good tour, you should be able to get back to where you came from. Um, so you do have an option. I added one to this bicycle. Learn more about our bicycle parking information at the link below. So that was me recorded. Um, and that can actually help a little bit with accessibility if that's something that you want to um, 
work on. So I didn't actually realize that was a feature until somebody asked me. So that was kind of a fun thing to discover. Um, and then you can also add video just like I had video, um, audio just then. And then to further accessibility, um, adapt this, you can actually create a written transcript to go with your tour. So um, that's one of the reasons it's helpful to have a kind of a script because then you know what is said where in the tour if a screen reader needed to read that. So to start with, you need to make a 360 image. So to do that, you take your cell phone and you download the Google Street View software. And once you've done that, it's free. Um, you can create a photosphere and you take your 360 image. And I'm gonna show you screenshots of what that looks like. But my tips are, you take your image, you're gonna stand in one spot and you're basically gonna spin around and people are gonna look at you weird because you're standing in the middle of a space taking a 360 image and they don't always know what you're doing. So I tried to do this at times where there weren't many people around. So during spring break, over the Christmas um, break, on weekends, um, evenings are good times I've found to do this because you also don't really want people walking through your image um, because that can end up looking blurry um, or it can cut off a part of a person depending on when you take the photo and where they are. Um, and then you also wanna decide whether or not um, you want to uh, publish these images. So um, when you're doing this create a photosphere, you do have the option to upload these photos to Google Street View, which I've done and they get a lot of use. It's really interesting to see how much people are paying attention to this, the general 360 images aside from this tour. Um, you also have the option to blur things like your feet, which is really hard to take a photo without getting your feet in them. Um, and then there might be some images you want to blur that might have some copyright or other restrictions around them. Um, once you've taken your images, they go into a folder on your phone. Um, on my Android, I found they went into the pictures folder under panoramas. Um, I'm not sure for the iPhone because I don't have an iPhone, but um, I'd be glad to help you try to figure that out if you need to. And for them to be uploaded to ThingLink, the default size has to be eight, 8192 by 4096 pixels and in a JPEG format. Um, for me, when I use the photo editor, that's actually exactly half the size of the default. So I just had to resize it to half the size um, dimensionally. So here is a screenshot of my phone. So when you download the 360 um, Street View software um, and you pick to create a photosphere, the first thing that comes up is an orange circle. And it wants you to center that white circle over the orange circle and it will take a picture. And after it's taken the first picture, you just stand there with the phone. It puts four orange dots around that initial picture and it wants you to pick one of them to center your phone over again. So basically you spin in a circle and take the initial uh, set of photos. And then you'll see that once you've done the, the sides, then the photos will want to be up top and then down below. And if you'll notice, there's a check mark at the bottom there, and there's a little bit of an orange sliver. That shows me how much progress I've made. So this will be surrounded with the orange. And when it's done taking all the photos it needs, it will turn green and it will stitch the photos together for you. And once you stitch the photos together, it creates the image, um, it uploads it to your account, and you have the option at that point to add blurs. So here you can kind of see it's a little bit different coloration, coloration there. Um, those are my feet. So I blurred out my feet and this is just showing me if I wanted to keep blurring it. Um, the main place I've seen this used is to blur out people's faces, but blurring out your feet is super helpful too. So basically you can upload this to Street View and then you can also um, uh, you know, put it into ThingLink. So once you've got your images ready, resized, you upload them to ThingLink, and then you're gonna to need to decide what you wanna to add to it. And you have different kinds of um, tags that you can add. And I'm gonna click on this for a minute. And um, this ThingLink has great help information on their page, but they talk through the different tag types there. So you can decide what kind of tags you want to add. So I'm not going to go through all those right now, but you'll see them in the examples that I provide. Um, so you can also, there are some 
icons that come default with ThingLink, but I wanted a lot more icons than they gave me. So I went over to the noun project and the noun project, if we want to look over there, has uh, icons and photos for everything. So you can either download icons from the noun project for free, but if you do the free, you have to add attribution. So these are Creative Commons licensed um, resources, and so attribution is required. If you do want to invest $39.99 a year, um, you can instead just pay for a subscription and you don't have to um, pay for uh, I mean, you don't have to attribute the icons. So one thing that people have asked me before is if I look at my download history, I only have to attribute those things that I have used um, outside of my subscription period. So before I got a subscription, um, I didn't have a subscription here. And so it says none must attribute. So that attribute, sorry. Uh, so the royalty is says you know, must attribute. So there are some things that I've downloaded during my subscription period and anything I download then doesn't require for you to actually pay for subs to, to actually attribute. So you don't have to worry about keeping track of when you got that icon because there's a whole history in your noun project account. So if I wanted to download something, let's say I was interested in history and I was going to put something, a historical photo in my image, you get a whole bunch of icons to choose from. And I will suggest that you probably want to avoid something that is um, too detailed, because look how small these are. Now, these do look better in a virtual reality environment. You can kind of tell what they are, and they get bigger when you hover over them. But if it's super detailed, you're not going to be able to see what's going on in that image. So like this one right here has got really thin lines. And if you imagine it, it's going to be really hard to tell. So just do the best you can with what you think is going to work in that environment. So for history, maybe you want to say, OK, this one's good because it sort of looks like turning back time. It's nice and bold. And you have options to change the color of the background. You can also change the shape. So if I want to make it a circle, I could do that. I can make it uh, purple in the background. And you have an option to download as SVG or PNG, and you can pick the size. Um, since they're so tiny, I just usually go with 128 by 128. And you download the SVG. It's downloaded it for me, and it's ready to upload into the link. So, um, you can also, I, you know, you saw the pictures I had in ThingLink. You can actually change the background image if you want to. So if you, for example, um, a lot of our pictures have references to masking up, and I want to take some of those out because we're not requiring masking anymore. And so I can retake the image and replace the background if I want to after I've done tagging a photo. Um, things you might want to consider when you're doing the work you're doing is do they actually work like you expect? So give them a test drive, make sure your images are legible, um, consider how much text you're putting in because there is a limit for your various tags. And then also make sure you give it a try both in your phone and in a virtual reality setting and not just through a web browser. Um, you could also add on things like I mentioned, audio, video, uh, historic photos. You could also add in links to other partners maybe you have in your library building or um, if you're another kind of institution, if you've got other partners you want to highlight, uh, directions, parking. So these are just kind of, the, there's a lot of potential there what you might add. Um, and so I'm going to go back to my thing link and I will add an image. So let's go back outside. So something that's occurred to me is not only do I need to talk about the present, but maybe I want to talk about the past. So I've got my image. I'm going to click edit. And I've already downloaded a photo from our special collections. So I'm going to add a tag. And I'm going to add text and media. I can upload an image. Let's see if I. There we go. Open that. And in uh, the Mandela. Oops. 
So that's the title. In 1904, the MSU library was housed in the Montana Hall building on the fourth floor as pictured here. Okay, so I did that. And you can see on the left that I misspelled building, so I can fix that. It highlighted that for me. That was helpful. Um, okay, and I can change the icon, and I can either use the ones that I have used recently or the ones that come with it, or I can upload one. And I've done squares for most of these, but for my example, I did a little circle one. So there it is. Open it and then select it and say done. And I can either just put it right on top of that building or I can use this feature to point perhaps to the fourth floor. One thing I did notice in virtual reality is this little white line um, does not appear. So you probably want to at least have it sort of somewhere on the building so you know what it's going to be in the virtual reality environment. And I click done. And I'm done. That was super easy. And now if I click on that, I can see this image. So one of the things that I could have done here as well is created a link back to the um, archive where I got this photo from as a sort of an educational moment about Montana history. So this idea just occurred to me the other day. So I thought that I'd show you all how this might work. And then I'm going to go back after this presentation and do more of these. Um, so some ways you could use this could be for campus recruitment and orientation. Um, our MSU folks actually do that regularly. They have this as part of their orientation packet. Um, this might help with Parents Weekend as well, a way to see the library, um, make parents happy to show the, them where their students spend all their time. Um, we actually share these links with potential job seekers or candidates, particularly people out of town. Uh, you could use this to show off archival collections, uh, advertise library instruction. Um, another thing that's come up is, do you want to perhaps have an Easter egg or a scavenger hunt of some sort where you say to people, can you find this within the building? And then you could also point out things that you don't think students would have noticed otherwise, like gender neutral bathrooms, or we've got a walking treadmill in the building, um, artwork that people have never noticed, call number locations, all sorts of opportunities to educate people. Um, for you, maybe you want to use this to work with other partners. You Maybe you say to your admissions office, hey, I've got this great software. If we approach ThingLink, maybe they'll let us add a second seat for another $500 if you will into partner um, in using this technology. I could see as a way to show behind the scenes, office spaces that people don't usually uh, go into, but maybe you show some catalogers at work, for example. Um, so it's a really great way to really highlight the work that's being done that's maybe not visible normally. Um, and then you'll probably want to get the word out about this. So uh, we've got this link on our website. We have actually advertised it through our campus news, through social media, and then we had something like this flyer where we actually have a bunch of these at the entrance to the library where people can actually learn more about it. And then um, these are some additional considerations. I'm at the end of my time, so I'll be posting these slides um, along with a link to this recording so you can always go back and read these additional considerations. And I hope that you all will follow up with me. I'm glad to talk about logistics, um, but hopefully this is like a really simple way for you to use some cool technologies and maybe make the library seem a little cooler because you're actually using these as a way to get um, in touch with people. So uh, I will open up to questions. I think Angela, um, not Angela, sorry. Uh, I'm trying to forget, I forgot your name, oh no. Uh, will be asking me questions. Ashley, that's it. <laughs> Not a problem. So yes, we have two questions. Our first question is, do you recommend a 360 camera? Okay, um, that's a great question. I, um, I looked into standalone 360 cameras, and I will say that phone technologies right now are super advanced. And so I had a Galaxy S5 um, that was at end of life, and it was doing just fine with this. Um, but since it was at end of life, it was having battery issues. So that was not related. So now I have a Galaxy S21. Um, and now they've got the S22s out there. Um, 
I found that actually, but most phones do fine. I think the biggest issue is um, storage is if you've got enough room to store and things. So you may want to just delete any images you took afterwards so it doesn't fill up all the storage on your phone. But I actually just transfer them to my Google Drive and then I delete them from my phone. Regarding accessibility colors, can you see high contrast on these colors? Mm. Um, that's a good question. And I don't know. Uh, we have an accessibility librarian. And so um, that's one of my things to work on with her because this was just for a proof of concept for an open house we had this fall. Um, we were actually going to have an open house at the beginning of January. And then I got canceled because of the um, Omicron variant. And so I put together this tour as a supplement and it's gotten to be a little bit more prevalent. So um, the answer is I don't know, but it's I, something I'm definitely going to be tackling within the next few weeks because we need to make sure it's fully accessible. But we do have a transcript linked from our website um, accompanying this tour. So at least people have the text that they can use um, in conjunction with the video if they want it. Can you repeat the name of the package you bought from ThingLink? Um, it's, let's just switch over to ThingLink for a minute. I'm going to go to their site. So they, so let's see if I can, let's get me out of here so I can see what it looks like from you all. So you'll notice there are various options here, pricing. I went into education initially and the one that I wanted initially was um, for the academic, no, premium education license. Um, let's go into here for a minute. So you want the thing that's gonna allow you to publish um, 360 images and here it is, video publishing. So this is what I needed actually was this academic enterprise license. And they allowed me just to get a few seats for that. So in this case, I just got one seat. And so these other ones will let you take 360 images, but to, in order to publish them, you need to have the uh, academic enterprise license. And what I mentioned is if you contact ThingLink, you can get a pricing for $500 for one seat. So if you just, that's the minimum that you can get this for, um, but you can end up publishing your 360 images that way. So you want the academic enterprise license with one seat for $500. And if you have any issues with this, um, please contact me because I'm glad to do this. I learned about the software through um, an AR VR class I took um, through the online learning network and um, so I just decided to give it a try. And I thought if I liked it as much as I did, I thought I'd share that with you all. Um, so hopefully there's some applicability for you too. And do analytics come with things like? Oh, yes, they do. Ah, now I have to log myself back in. Oh, I have my credentials saved. Isn't that lovely? So um, there are academic analytics here. So if I click on this little statistics button, it will tell you your stats. And this is the last 30 days. I can change this to forever. So this is when I initially got the word out. I got woo, way up there and it's gone in ticks. And you can see that you all have made the statistics go up even more. So you can see all sorts of things about what's going on here. This is just for that initial um, door image that I had. Each image has its own statistics. So you can actually see how people, how, how, how far people are getting in the tour. You'll see like this third floor, just like in real life, when they get to the third floor, they're getting tired. They don't feel like looking around anymore. So um, the first part of the tour definitely has more usage than the latter parts of the tour. Um, and again, you can do a, a forever and see more of your statistics there. So that's super helpful. And then there's like more stuff in here about tag views and scene embeds as well. So I wanna be mindful that there are other presenters out there and you should get to their sessions. So I will wrap it up and you can uh, tweet with me at Doralyn at Twitter or Doralyn at Montana.edu. And I'm glad to talk with you more. And thanks for your help today, Ashley. It's been my pleasure. <laughs>